Hello again and welcome to another tutorial on SkySieve Structural 3D. Today we're going to look at designing aluminium structures using uh, American standards, the ADM, or Australian standards, European standards and even Canadian standards. So we support a range of different uh, design codes across the world, um, enabling you to design um, and test your aluminium structures uh, both within the software, within our 3D analysis software, and we're also going to show you how you can uh, use the quick design to do it as a standalone as well. So you can just plug in your own forces and just get some results, including a nice report. Um, so aluminium structures are pretty typical for sort of, you might have some platform style structures like this. Um, they're used in a lot of building elements like windows, uh, stairwells, um, and yeah, quite, quite a, a lightweight and uh, flexible material. So they're using a lot of different applications. Um, even solar industry uses a lot of them. So they're quite um, unique when designing, but also, um, yeah, very, it can be very used in the right applications to, to create a very lightweight structure that's still able to hold uh, a lot of the desi design forces required of them. And today we're going to look at both examples. So we'll start by just launching the standalone quick design module. So this one, uh, you can just launch from our dashboard here under quick design. I've got a whole range of different design software, but if you want, you can just choose by type, go aluminium, and you can see the three, di the four different uh, aluminium design standards that we support. So Australian, New Zealand, 1664, the CSA 157, uh, the European standard, and the ADM, which is US code. Uh, so we can have a look today at mostly the ADM um, aluminium standard. So we can launch that and from here we're able to, just like all of our other quick design calculators, you're able to, able to specify various inputs like the span, uh, the type of shape that it is. So we support hollow rectangular, hollow, cir hollow circular, I section and C section. Uh, and then also the dimensions of the structure. And if you do hit enter, I accidentally just hit enter, it will run the calculations for you. So once you've plugged in all those values, uh, let's do an I section, and we reduce the width a little bit. And once you've selected your uh, aluminium material type, whether it's welded, non-welded, alloy, and the temper material uh, properties, um, you can also put in some design forces. So these are the loads that are being applied to this member and then run the calculation. So you'll see you'll get some um, very clear output, some utilization ratios for the different checks being performed, as well as some combined um, ratios as well. And within the report, you have a more detailed step-by-step um, -step calculation. So you can see the different steps that the software has taken to come to these final answers. So you can um, you know, evaluate or check the assumptions that are being run as well as um, see exactly what the software is doing. So there's no, none of that black box that you might get in other programs. Um, it's very clear, very transparent in terms of what's being uh, calculated and very helpful for an engineer to kind of self-diagnose any issues. Maybe there's some input issues or um, even just understand what design checks are being performed and how they're being performed. So uh, very, very helpful to have that design report. So that's the, the standalone version. Um, you can also use the batch run where you're putting in you know, multiple members at a given time. So you can run a whole range of them if you've got sort of a schedule of sections or um, members that you want to test or design for. But we're also today going to look at how we can um, both model and design all in one step uh, using structural 3D software as well, which is our finite element analysis software. So we're going to build something like this from scratch and uh, yeah, take you through the step-by-step -step process, uh, show you some modeling shortcuts, as well as how you can just pull out, pull out all the forces, all the design loads out of this model, including all the section properties, um, the material definitions, if you provided those, and automatically run those checks in one step. So we're gonna start fresh. So I'm just gonna go to Structural 3D. So starting with a completely uh, new or fresh uh, interface. We'll go to the um, Imperial system. So we're going to do this for ADM. They do work regardless of your unit system, but just to keep things uh, consistent, I'm going to build my model uh, using feet and kip and then um, design it in the same unit system. But it wouldn't matter. If I, if I built the model in the metric system, it would still uh, tra convert all those values to Imperial, run the calculation check and, and return those results. 
Um, so we're going to start just by mapping out some of the nodes. Um, we can do that with X, Y, Z coordinates. But today I'm going to use the pen tools just a little bit quicker. Um, so I'm going to go up, say, three feet. Go across in the X. And we can also just plug in a number, say 12 feet span. And then down by three feet. So it's going to automatically connect to any adjacent nodes. I think I'm just going to connect that to the midpoint and then also connect that. So similar to what we had in that first example, um, I'll just build something similar to that. I might split this, it just makes the things a little bit more accurate because uh, it'll get the correct unbraced length of that member given that that's its own element. And I might just uh, repeat this. It's just an easy way to replicate the structure. Actually, I'll put in some supports first. Maybe some pin supports, the base there. And then I'll just control A to select all. And I can use the copy paste, but today I'm going to use the repeat feature because uh, it will just connect everything, which we'll show you. And let's repeat that, say, eight times with maybe six foot spacing. We're going to go in the Y direction. So I've got my model as Z up. Z axis is my vertical. And I will connect the nodes with members and we'll connect it with a section one for now. So you can see that's connected everything, um, replicated my structure, and yeah, give me a really good foundation, good basis for my model. So obviously that was really, really quick and easy. Um, what I might also do now is we're gonna choose a, diff a few different sections. So I'm gonna start by um, adding the different sections that we might use in this uh, type of structure. So maybe all my uh, kind of bracing members here might be of one type. So I'm just gonna hold control and select all those. And I'll make that a section ID too. And we'll define all these sections later, but for now we can see that there's changing to a green color. So you can see there's different elements there. And maybe for these beams, we might use a different section type. So let's do the same there, we go members, section three. So we've got three types of members now. And yeah, maybe one more for, actually, I think that's pretty good. Let's, let's stick with three. And finally, we're gonna add just some um, distributed loads to maybe simulate some dead load or some live load on the structure. So we can use area loads for this. So I'm just gonna do the corner, no corner nodes. So two, 42, 43, and three. And we'll do a maybe 0 0.5 KSF in the global Z direction. And I wanna go two to 42, so that's gonna go this way. I actually wanna go this way, so two to three. And we'll make this a live load. So you can see it's applied the pressure there. And if I just go to equivalent area loads, it's automatically calculated the tributary uh, tributary area and forces required for each of the um, the beams there. So I'm pretty happy with how that's being applied. I'm going to go ahead and add some load combinations. So maybe we've got some dead loads. We'll turn on the uh, sulfate. And go to load combinations, sign codes, and we'll use the US standard the ASCE 716. Define what loads they what the loads represent and import those. So now I've got some load combinations. And my structure is really starting to take shape. The only thing I have to do now is to def define the sections. So when defining my aluminium sections, I typically want to use the ADM um, library to, to find the materials and, and maybe even the cross sections as well, uh, just so I'm using the correct alloys and tempers required uh, of that particular section. So just to start off, uh, we can go to our undefined beams here. They, these are the black elements here. And we'll go to the builder. We do support the American ADM Design standard too, so you can select from this catalog. Maybe there's some rectangular tubes. Uh, maybe like a five inch tube, something like this. 
And on my material panel on the right, it's going to default to structural steel, but we really want to define a specific ADM material that is being used in this design. Um, this will make allow the software to do the more accurate design checks and uh, make sure we're using the correct material properties for the checks. Uh, so it might be a non-welded, um, we've got our different classes or tempers, and selecting there, that uh, just checking everything to make sure that that's the correct alloy, correct temper, and the correct strengths as well. So once I'm happy with that, I'll submit that as my material ID 8, and now it's been assigned to that section, I can now submit that. So we'll go and do the cross section, maybe the bracing, let's do say an angled section. And I can select that same one that I chose or I can load in a new material. Um, let's choose the same one for now. And then we'll do some I-beams for these beam elements. Now I can, I can just put in my own cross-section too, so say for I-beam I've got my own dimensions, so I can put in some custom um, values here if I need to, uh, provided the material is still set to aluminium, then that should still work. So as long as the, the material is aluminium and the cross-section is supported by the design module, which you can see um, back here, all these supported. So actually I can see that uh, the equal angle isn't supported, so I might actually substitute that for a, a C section or a channel section. So we can go back. Go for some of these standard channels. And that's it. So all my profiles are now have been defined. I've applied my loads, I've built my model. I'm ready to perform an analysis and then go on to a design check as per the ADM standard. So I'll start with just running the analysis. So just hit solve. And that will run the analysis for all the different load combinations as well. So if I have multiple, it will run them all at once. I can review some of the results, so my reactions. Um, I can review the envelope results as well for my moment forces. So I can start evaluating you know, some of these forces or these stresses and just to get an idea of my system and how it's performing. The summary report is also really handy for that. Um, I can get an idea of what my utility is more on an analysis based on the analysis results. So it's more just uh, kind of comparing the stress limits to the material um, limits of this of the sorry the stress limits of the material. Um, but we obviously want to go and do a more in-depth ADM specific design. So let's go ahead with that. So I just hit design. And I can go other design, or I can just click this panel here. And again, you'll be presented with the same one that we saw on the quick design standalone module, uh, but we can either search or just select uh, where the ADM one is. And what this will do is now import all my sections, my members, uh, and import the material properties, such as which taper um, or alloys I selected, and also, more importantly, the loads that have been applied to my structure. So you can hit, see here the moment in the Z, the Y, the V, so the shear, Y and Z, as well as the compression and tension forces has all been imported. Um, and I'm able to change these values if I like, if I want to, so I can override any of these inputs. Um, but you can see it's already done a check for me, so everything seems to be passing. Um, and I can review the individual mem members, so I can also click these to sort of isolate particular elements, and also look at the report, which will give me a lot more detail, same as the, um, the quick design check, it'll uh, provide the full detailed calculations, so I can review my design properly. On top of that, there's also a log. Uh, this will just tell you what's being done when we're importing. So it gives you a little bit more detail if say some of your members aren't being imported, it will tell you, okay, these haven't been imported because um, you know the, the material is set to structural steel or timber or something, you know, some incorrect material um, definition there. Or it will also um, give you a little bit more information about what lo loads are being imported. So that's kind of handy too. Um, Oops, accidentally closed out. I can just click design again and relaunch the same um, module I was just using. 
And the other thing I can do is review the log of the individual checks, but I can also perform a summary report. So say you don't need the, det the full detailed report so you can see member by member, but I just want a summary report to provide with my design. Um, the summary report is automatically generated for you, so you can just provide this two or three page document, um, which I'll show you in a second. So this comes out in PDF format. It comes with a uh, screenshot of the model, a little bit of information about the model and the calculation being performed, the input table, so the same as the input table that you see on the, on the um, user interface here. And then finally the results. So this just gives you a really concise summary of the model and the designs, but also um, allows you to sort of go back and, and review the detailed parts of the design to make sure that um, you know, the software is aligned correctly with what you're, what you're expect expecting out of the calculations. And from there, I can save my design data. So say I've made some changes here, you know, I've wanted to I don't know, update my bracing lengths or um, change, override some of these forces. And just a note on these forces, they are pulling in the worst case for each particular um, force. So for instance, the MZ in member one, that would be from a particular load combination that has the worst moment in the Z, uh, about the Z axis for that element. Uh, same with Y, so there might be different load combinations, so it will be taking the worst case out of all the different forces. Um, but once I'm happy with that, I can save this design data. And when I save this with my model, it'll all save together. So I basically, if I come back to the model, you know, months later, it's got all my up-to-date uh, an analysis model, um, as well as any overrides I've, I've done in the design check. So there you have it. You can kind of go by and maybe try different elements and try to reduce the amount of material or, um, yeah, increase the efficiency of your design, but you can always just go back and rerun the design check at any time um, using that integrated analysis and design feature. It makes it really easy because you don't have to keep um, updating your loads on your spreadsheets and it's all integrated in one system. So I hope that helps. I hope that um, gives you a really good introduction to the aluminium design check in SkySiv. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to comment on the video below. Um, otherwise, we hope to see you on the platform. Thanks.